past couple years, conservation has received a bad reputation from the media. However, sea life are working very hard to try and change that. From starfish to crabs and clownfish to sharks, they host a wide variety of animals in their care. Every year, sea life save over 100 seals and 40 turtles, and they work hard with activities such as beach cleanups and other things that really help the environment. Sea Life's aim is in total to inspire love and care for the ocean around them, and they work on that by taking part in projects all across the world. Today we're here in Loch Lomond and we're very lucky because we've got a few staff members who are willing to tell us a bit more about the conservation work that Sea Life does and a bit more about the star of the show, April the Turtle. Okay, so what is your name? James McKnight. And what is your job title? Part-time aquarist. Can you go into depth about what your job entails? Essentially I just look after all the fish, um, feeding, siphoning, cleaning, uh, backwashes, things like that. Um, ensuring the kind of well-being of everything, pretty much. Hello, my name's Rebecca. People call me Bex. I prefer Bex. What is your job title? Uh, so I am a full-time accurist at the Sea Life Centre. It is mainly feeding and cleaning. Obviously all the animals need to be looked after. We do a little bit of plumbing as well, when new tanks need to be plumbed in or pipes fail, valves fail. So it's a little bit of that. It's, um, a little bit of science thrown in as well. We have to do water tests and alkalinities and stuff like that. So it's a little bit of everything actually. What is your favourite animal at the aquarium? That's not fair. Uh, it's between Lily, the Asian shark clawed otter, the oldest one that we've got, and April, who's obviously our disabled partner. Don't really have a favourite. I do like the ornate spiny blue lobster, so creeper in the venom tank. She is one of my favourites. I mean, I do like, everyone expects you to say otters and turtles, but I like the unknowns. April was originally from the Maldives. Um, as far as we know, she's only five or six, so she's still really young for an olive ridley sea turtle. Um, she encountered some ghost netting, which is where fishermen have used up these nets and they throw them overboard and they just leave them in the water. So essentially what this ghost netting did is it got caught round her kind of shoulder joint um, and acted like a tourniquet, just cut off the blood flow to the fin and then it just fell off essentially. Uh, she also has a lung infection as well and tears in her lungs which means that every time she takes a breath in air escapes out from her lungs and into her shell which causes uh, kind of buoyancy, so she can't actually dive, so she can never hunt for food as well as any other Olive Ridley sea turtle, so she had to be rehabilitated and then she can't go back out into the wild, especially because in the Maldives it's about 30 degrees, 32 degrees every day, so if you can imagine being a turtle and floating, you get your back out in water all day, every day and it's 32 degrees, it's not very healthy for her at all, so. Is she spoiled? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that wee turtle, honestly. She gets the hint she wants. The commonplace things that you can find on a beach or in the ocean um, and the impact that it has, I believe it's like 45,000 tonnes of waste they find in the ocean. So it is a major impact that still needs to be rectified. But obviously we do things around here, like we'll go out and do beach cleans as well, which I think are an integral part of keeping stuff out of the ocean. April's story is unfortunately not a solitary case, as each year over a thousand turtles are killed from pollution, and scientists predict that by 2050 there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Sea Life is desperately trying to stop this from happening. April's story is not the only one. However, Sea Life hope, with the help of April, they can inspire more and more people to care about our oceans and seas.
not just for us, but for those who live in it too.